on Daniela Bodo is how to blank. So um, today I thought that it would be fun to do a sarcastic how to play the violin and please keep in mind that this is all just a skit and this is not actually how you play the violin and also um, please don't comment like um, that I'm really bad at the violin because I actually do have experience. I for almost three years now so um, this is like not like the best that I can play this is all in good fun so uh, this the purpose of this video is just um, it, it's just to like laugh at it and don't take any of this seriously um, and yeah so let's just get started hi my name is the amazing violinist and yes that is video because um, since I'm such an amazing violinist, um, she she wanted to do a tutorial on like how to play the violin and since I'm such an amazing violinist, I asked her if I could, if I could be in her video and she said I could and I'm so excited. So anyway, um, today I'm going to show you how to play the violin and by the end of this video, you're going to be like so good at the violin, like you're going to be like uh, almost as good as me. Nobody will be as good as me, but you'll be almost as good as me. So, yeah. The first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to rosin your bow. And yes, there is a proper way to do it. And people think that there is such thing as over rosining your bow. There's not. So you, you really, in fact, you really just want to cake your rosin on there because um, the more rosin you put on your bow, um, the better sound you'll get. And um, the rosin, like putting too much rosin, people think it destroys your instrument, but it doesn't because, I mean, like what's the point of even like, I mean like, like if it destroyed your instrument, then why couldn't they just use something else? Like something instead of rosin. So you really just wanna cake the rosin on there and, um, and like you should do this you should spend up to an hour rosining your bow um, and I mean you could spend more time in fact if you spend more time you'll get a better sound but um, I mean sometimes like usually an hour is like the most time you have so why not use all that time rosining your bow so just spend just rosin your bow for an hour and you'll you'll have like really good sound Perfect. That looks awesome. Now it's guaranteed that when I that, that when I play, the sound is going to be awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how the proper way to hold your violin. Well, um, most people and most violin teachers say that the proper way to hold your violin in rest position while standing up is like that. But that is not the proper way. And while sitting down, the proper way is like that. Those two ways are dead wrong. Like, that is not the proper way to hold a violin in rest position. Um, and there is only one way, sitting or standing up. This, this works for both, and you have to do this for both. You have to hold your violin by the tuning pegs, and not the fine tuners, the tuning pegs, because um, because this way you'll, um, you won't have to worry about having to waste time tuning it because, well, but because by holding it by the tuning pegs, you're already tuning it up because the tuning pegs are like turning. So, so the strings are already being tuned. So you don't have to worry about that. And that's the proper way to hold your instrument. And also like it's, it's the proper way because it just looks so much better. Okay. Now, um, most people think that you uh, always need to play in tune, but that is not true. You have to play so out of tune. You have to play like way out of tune. Like that's supposed to 
to be an F, but it's like close to an F sharp. So you have to play like so out of tune. The reason for this is because if like your teacher says like, um, says like you need to get it in tune, you have like enough, you have like enough space or whatever to move it. Because if, if it's just slightly out of tune, like no one's gonna be able to tell. Um, like, and then your teacher will just say um, that it's still out of tune and that you still haven't fixed it yet because it's like slightly out of tune so you won't be able to tell. So you want to make it so that you can tell it's out of tune. And I know you're thinking, well why can't you just play perfectly in tune? That's not possible because nobody's perfect so like you can't always like play perfectly perfectly in tune. So like you're always slightly off. So you have to play so out of tune so that you have like room to fix it. And every once in a while, you'll get the problem where you have a string out of tune, but um, the tuning, the fine tuner for that, for that string is like already turned, so you can't turn it more. Well, most people just use these. Well, the problem with these is that they can put your string so out of tune. So, um, so like a good way to get it in tune, this is the first way, and then it's another way. A good way to get your string in tune is um, like if your tuning peg, if your fine tuner is turned all the way, it's actually not turned all the way, it's just stuck. So you want to you want to force it as hard as you can um, and like you, you want to like try to tune it, like try to turn it. Uh, and when it comes off, that's how you know that it's still gonna turn. Also, the other way to um, get your strings in tune is to just bash your violin on the ground, especially if it's a hard ground, because those work best. But I just have a carpet here, so we're just gonna have to make do with that. So, you just wanna bash it on there. Bam! Just like that. Um, because what will happen is like the strings will like shake or whatever when they're being bashed down and um, that's gonna put them more in tune. The best way to cross your fingers over two strings when you have to play double stops and it's like a fifth apart, um, you know how you can't really do that because then it would be like a sixth. Um, well, the best way to do that is um, to like, um, like press down like with your finger like that and like kind of like um like just kind of like bend it right there like right there instead of doing this and even when you don't have to play double stops why not just do it like that why not just play like that even when you don't have to play double stops like, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video. And remember that this was all just a skit and that is not like, um, that, that's not actually how you play the violin and this was all a skit and please don't take this, please don't take this seriously because um, this was just for fun and I just wanted, the only purpose of this video was to make you guys laugh. This wasn't actually supposed to like teach you guys how to play the violin. Um, this was all a skit. Um, anyways, also I have an announcement that um, I recently just got a full size violin and I'm so 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 excited. I used a half size for like two years and I uh, moved straight up to the full size. Yes, I skipped three quarter size. Um, yeah, so um, I just wanted to tell you guys that and yeah. If you guys want to be a good candidate for a shout out my next video then like this video and comment down below have you ever been to sleepaway camp before because this video is being uploaded a week after i got back from a sleepaway camp um and yeah so just comment down below have you ever been to sleepaway camp
camp before and if you have tell me what like what kind of camp was it and like what did you do and stuff just like kind of like tell me all about it and if you haven't tell me if you're gonna go to sleepaway camp like in the future like this summer or something or um if you don't know or if you're not going then um just tell me um do you want to go in the future um and and if you've never been to a sleepaway camp before you should because um this was actually like my second time um last year was my first time and it was so so much fun and yeah so anyways guys that's pretty much it guys and i will see you guys the subscribers and viewers in my next video peace out y'all